Hey everyone, this is Miss Amy here to do another fun art project. Today we're going to create this fun, colorful folk art tree project. So we're going to learn just a bit about folk art and then we'll go over our list of supplies. So folk art is art that is um, based on a culture where um, can come from different countries or even different parts of the country. For example, in the United States, depending on where the artist lives, their art will be maybe a little bit different depending on the culture of where they live. It's often an untrained artist or an artist that lives in an isolated area, maybe a rural area where there's not a lot of people and they create art that has simple um, design, um, has bright colors, and um, often doesn't have like a lot of perspective. It's just simple colors and shapes and um, objects that they're painting, or um, it can be painting, sculpture, any, any form of art. So today we're gonna create a simple, this is our folk art that we're gonna create today, a simple, tree design um, landscape. So for this project, you will need two pieces of watercolor paper. So I have two pieces here of watercolor paper. You could use mixed media paper also if you don't have watercolor paper handy. Um, you will need some, I'm using tissue paper that I cut up into little squares, different small squares different sizes of small squares, and I've got um, all different colors. This is the type of paper that you would like wrap gifts. You know, if you have a gift bag and you stick some tissue paper in there with the gift bag, that's the type of paper I am referring to. Um, this will work the best for our project. Now, if you don't have tissue paper, you could just cut up some colored paper that you have. That would be okay as a replacement. And then we will need a glue stick and a bottle of glue, some white, uh, either tempera or acrylic paint. You could use a little, they come in smaller sizes, a little bottle of craft paint is okay to use for this project. A little bowl to put the paint in and a Q-tip. Also a pencil, some scissors, some watercolor paints, a paintbrush, and a cup of water and a paper towel. This could be considered a mixed media project because we are using multiple art, uh, art supplies to create this project. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start with a piece of watercolor paper first. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually just paint our sky and we're gonna leave our um, bottom white to represent the snow. So what I'm going to do is get out my watercolor paints. We're going to do this first so it has time to dry while we're creating our trees. So go ahead and just drop a little bit of water in the colors you want to use. I'm going to use blue but you could definitely add some purple in there if you want to add a little more color to your sky, make it more of a night sky. You could definitely add some purple. Um, preferably the cooler colors because this is a winter scene and we want to create that winter sky. So I'm going to go ahead and just swirl my brush in that blue paint here, which is a really pretty blue. Now I'm going to decide where I want my snow to be. And I think here I'm just going to draw a line. doesn't have to be perfectly straight. And that's where I'm going to paint all the way above that. And I'm just going to paint straight across my paper because I am painting the sky and when you look at the sky it's um, going in a horizontal direction so I want to keep my paint in that direction and I'm just going back and forth with my brush if it's not going on well you probably don't have enough water on your brush and just need to add a bit more water my paper soaks up the water pretty well, so I need to have a little bit more of a wet brush for this. But your paper may not. But if it's not, the paint's not going on well, that's usually the case, is you just don't have enough water. 
And it's okay if you have some light and dark areas because when I look at the sky, that's what I see, light and dark. I don't always see every part of the sky is perfectly the same color. Uh, such a pretty blue. I really like this blue. And I'm painting gently with my brush. I'm not scrubbing my brush on the paper because I don't want to ruin my brush. So I'm just gently brushing that paint on. I'm going to kind of go over this line that I made so it blends in and doesn't look like a line. I like how my sky is looking. Now I've got plenty of paint on here, so I'm just adding some water now to spread that paint around. But I love how it looks, how it has a little bit of light and dark areas. I really like that look. All right. Gonna lighten this up, get rid of this. I want all my lines to be straight across. Must have dripped some water on that part. All right, that's looking good. All right, so I'm gonna set this paper aside to dry while we're working on our trees. So I'm gonna set that there and I'm gonna get out my other piece of paper. Dry that water off my table. So on my second piece, this is where I'm gonna create some trees. I wanna just draw some simple shapes. Remember folk art is usually um, very simple and simple shapes. So we just want some basic triangles and squares to create our trees. Now in my original one, I did several trees. I did different sizes of trees. You can see I did a large one, some smaller ones. You don't have to do this many trees. If you want to do fewer trees, like three trees, you could do three bigger trees if you wanted, or it's totally up to you what tree, how many trees you would like to make. Just know the more trees you make, the longer it's going to take you to complete your project. So I think for this video, I will just do three trees just to save on time a little bit, but you could definitely make some more. So I'm going to go ahead and just make my first triangle and then I'm going to make a little square underneath my triangle and then I'm going to flip my paper over and do a triangle this way so that it fits in here nicely and then make my little square and then I'm going to flip it back around and do a triangle this way that's okay if they're not the same sizes. Remember, we can have a variety of trees. Just make sure that your two pieces of watercolor paper or mixed media paper are the same size because um, when you cut the trees out of here, they'll definitely fit on your other paper. If this was bigger than our other paper, our trees might not fit. So that's why we're going to do it that way. Now, we're not gonna cut them out yet. What we're going to do is, this is easier to do it, put the paper on first. So what we're gonna do is get all our cut tissue paper, variety of colors here. So I'm gonna pull out a bunch of different colors, get some of those blues out of there. I have a great variety of colors in here. It's a pinks and blues and reds and yellows. And I'll just dump them all out, make a mess. Then I have access to all the colors. Perfect. Now I'm not going to use all these. I will save these some for other projects. But what we're going to do is we're going to use our glue stick for this one. So I'm just going to wipe some glue on my tree. Small area to start with. And I'm going to pick a color. I'm going to start with this pretty green. It's okay if you go over the lines. The reason we're using tissue paper is it's easier to see through. So when we cut it out, when we're done, we can cut out and trim this off and it's gonna look so cool. It's gonna look nice and neat and it won't have um, all these edges. 
So that's why I like tissue paper for this project too. And I can see my trees, see to cut out my trees. So I'm going to go ahead and spread some more glue and I'm going to overlap my colors. So I want that color to go on top of the other color just a little bit. So I put my glue on top of it, make sure that it's um, glued down nicely. And I'm going to use this cool, I'll use this glue since this one was sticking to me anyway. And overlapping. And I'm going to add, and you can do a variety of colors. Let's see, I've got some yellow here. So I'm going to put some yellow. And if they're kind of like this one's kind of sticking up, has a rip, I'm just going to cut it so it's nice and smooth there. Overlap. And it's kind of cool when they overlap because the colors kind of mix together a little bit. And you can see that coming through. That looks really cool to me. So I'm going to go through and do this on my entire, all three trees. Get them all glued and covered. Uh, let's see, oh, it's some pink. I need some pink. Make sure I overlap them. I want to cover all my all my um, tree. Let's see. Let's do a little bit more green there. We don't have any. We need another green one on there. So I'm going to overlap that one to cover that little spot that was white where my tree is showing through. Oh, I'm going to take another red piece and cover that. And then I think I would do a purple down here. So see, this is all nice and covered. So we're going to do that with all three trees, get that done. And then we'll cut them out and see how it's so nice. I can see my pencil line coming through the tissue paper. So that will be easier to cut out. Let's start with glue on the top of my tree this time. I like to start each tree and do it a little bit different. Trim this one up because it's a little rough and I don't want it to look that way. Oh, this one's going to need some more glue because it's a big piece. So your pieces can range. I would say try to keep them. This one's a little bigger, maybe closer to two inches, but around an inch or so would be perfect. If they're bigger or a little smaller, that is okay. We just don't want one big piece to cover our entire tree. We want to make it colorful. So we want to use a variety of pieces on our tree. Let's see. You should, um, if you have time, Google your, the country your family comes from. Um, and find out what some of that local folk art actually looks like. I did that with my family. My family comes from Finland. So I looked up some of the folk art made in Finland. It was really cool looking. So that's a fun thing to do. Because all of us come from different places. So the folk art is going to be a little bit different depending on where we're from, where our family is from. Uh, let's see what color haven't I used on this one. Let's use uh, another red. I like the red, the red color on this side. There we go. Oops, let's try. I try not to get the colors too close together because I want a nice variety. So I'm going to go ahead and don't want them super close or um, touching each other. I want different colors. 
Uh, if you want to do yours a little bit different, that is okay. The pink, I think I'll add another yellow down there. So I'll put some more and then overlap that. Okay, so um, if you do, after you're done, if you do notice that some edges are popping up here, you didn't get enough glue, just you can go ahead and you can actually put glue on top of it if you want to hold it down because it will dry and it'll be okay. So I have two trees down. See how kind they're looking kind of messy? We're going to clean those up in just a minute. So let me get my third tree done real quick. This time I'm going to start it with pink. Top of my tree. So each tree is going to have a different color on the top too. Purple. Ooh, that's a big blue. I trim that just a little bit. And while you're doing the trees, this gives your paper plenty of time to dry with the watercolor so that you can, you don't want to do anything to that until it's completely dry because glue won't stick very well when the watercolor is wet. I have a lighter blue here. I think I'll put a lighter blue there. I'm almost done with this tree. Yellow. And another pink I think, in there. And I still have a tiny bit showing there, so I'm going to put another little color down there. And I think I will put a little piece red at the bottom there ah uh, there we go all right so i'm making sure all my edges are down i can put my glue away whoops my glue stick now you're going to take these trees and you can see your pencil lines through it so you're going to cut right along your pencil lines if you're using a different kind of paper that you can't see through, you may have to redraw your lines on top of the paper and then cut it out. Um, with tissue paper, it's thin, so it's easy to see through. And that's why we're... There we go. Now we'll do this tree. See how nice and neat it looks? I cut off all those edges where the paper was hanging over. And so it looks nice and neat now. And my third tree. This is where, when you get done, you can go back and see if any of your paper is sticking up anywhere. So I had a couple pieces here that were, oops, I need to trim that edge off. There we go. I have a little bit sticking up here, so I'm going to go back and add a little bit of, take my glue stick and just add a little bit of glue to make sure that it's all sticking down here. There we go. I don't want any sticking up. 
All right, so it's okay. I just tore my little piece, but it's tissue paper. That is okay. Not sticking to me. <laughs> paper towel comes in handy for that. All right, so once we got we get that done, we can check our um or our paper that we painted on. Let me move some of my stuff off to the side so that I can get my other paper. So this is almost completely dry. I think I'll be okay for the video, but make sure that it's totally dry, that you can't feel any dampness to it and that it's completely dry. And so um, before you glue on it. So what I do first is I just arrange my trees how I want them to look. Now in folk art, you do not have to follow the perspective that we normally follow in art, meaning Normally smaller items are in the background because they're farther away. In folk art, you can do it however you want. A lot of times they don't follow those perspective rules. So you can place your trees however you would like. You can overlap them a little. So I'm gonna go ahead and see how I like it. I kind of like this design a little bit. I like my big tree in the middle and two trees on the side. Perfect. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to glue down with my glue bottle. The reason I'm using my glue bottle now is because the paper is a little thicker and I don't think the glue stick will be as strong to hold that paper down. So I'm just going to spread a little glue all over the back of my tree. You can see that in there. I put glue all over the back of my tree. And now I'm going to glue that down on my paper. Make sure that's all glued down. And then I'm gonna do my other tree. If I'm overlapping a tree, I'm gonna do the one on top last. So I overlap that one, I'm gonna do that one last because it goes on top a little bit. So I have glue all over this tree. And then I'm gonna glue this one down. Nice. Then I'm going to glue my final tree on here. There, and put this glue away. We won't need that anymore. And my final tree is gonna overlap slightly. There we go. Ah, beautiful. Okay, so um, we wanna take the last step is we're gonna take a little bit of our white paint and we're just gonna put a tiny bit into the bowl like I just have a pea-sized bit of paint in that bowl there. So I'm gonna take my Q-tip and dip it in the paint. This is where we're gonna add perfectly round snowflakes. So you're just gonna drop your Q-tip. You're just gonna spot it on your paper in front of the trees, on the trees, just randomly all over and create those cool looking snowflakes. They look so cool. You can add as much snow as you want. It can be snowing a lot or just a little bit. And I think I'll add a couple more here and I will be done. Nice. Well, that is all to this project. Uh, just make sure that your watercolor is completely dry before you glue your trees on. But that is our folk art for today. So thank you for joining me for this fun project. Always know that you can send me a picture of your project. I would love to see what you have created. All right, thank you for joining me today. Bye-bye.